Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're going to be jumping in to some more Volcano Blocks. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today we are now in Chapter 3. Yes, we are now in Chapter 3 where we're going to have to dive into some blood magic. And it looks like well, there's going to be a little bit of progression before we even get there. And also, we're going to need to really start amping, uh, ramping up our automation. And I think we're going to end up building a second layer above this as we do have our pillars right here that are ready to go up and we need to kind of get automation set up for cobblestone as well so that way we will have the ability to uh, to build this and so having another layer on top is going to give us even more access to uh to just more room um and also you can see over here i've went ahead and separated all nine of the items that we're going to be using um, inside our machine here and I have been farming them and also our automated farms over here have been doing pretty good and we've expanded our crystals so let's talk a little bit more about prodigy tech so as you can see I have went through those ores like we did last episode and I did end up get, getting one dark ore and you're gonna see a lot of dark uh, references in this mod because of course it's called evil craft um, you can see found between level 6 and 66 so I find that absolutely hilarious um, but you see right here, coarse dirt. This is because right here we have the dark gem, right? So we need to collect a dark gem and we'll get the book and we'll also get a nether chest, which is kind of wicked. The nether chest is quite awesome. Um, so once we get it, I'll kind of explain to you. But we also need to go down a progression of getting ourselves a fossil, which is going to inevitably lead us to a spawner. Um, so yeah, we're going to have an empty spawner, which is going to become uh, be from Solus. So I'm going to really have to read up on both these two mods, as you can see, they both have in-game documentation. And so I'm going to have to really read up on that. And this one gives you a choice reward. Now, the problem is, is I don't actually, I don't know what the best item is for the choice reward. Um, so that's going to be, I don't know, some, I mean, maybe, maybe once we read the book, we'll be able to later on pick what's the best thing. Because it might, might specify something related to the spawner. I don't know. So, let's go ahead and see what we can't get from here. This thing is fired up, ready to go. I'm just wasting time right now, just talking. Um, but this right here, this is going to consume tin, same as the ore, but it's gonna have a 20% chance of producing a random fossil. So this is dirt with fossils, right here. So we have a, a chance of getting just dirt with fossils or there's dirt with other types of fossils, I do believe. Um, so if we take a look, it does say dirt with fossils, dirt with frozen fossils, Fossils and moss and glowing fossils, all of which are things that we can get. And I think the percentage on this is 40%, so it's a little higher. Everything else is 20%. So we're more likely to get this particular fossil, but uh, given that there's, a, of course, a 20% chance for everything else, there we go. There's a frozen fossil. So I'm going to have to go through this and kind of wait. Eventually, we're going to get this set up where we can just fully automate it. There's the glowing which is nice. Um, I don't actually know what these are used for. It looks like ender bone chunks. Okay, so these are used, I'm assuming, in the soulless mod. So yeah, that's going to be something that we have to focus on. Because um, as of right now, we're not quite there. Like I said, we're going to get that book once we get all of these things. All of these different uh, uh, blocks. We'll be able to make this uh, soulless book. Technically, we probably already make it. But it's better that I just do this. So... I think that is all of them, correct? Do we need two of each or something? No? Okay, so we have to complete the dark gym first. All right, so let's go ahead and complete the dark gym. That is pretty simple. Um, there is two methods we can do. We can do a squeezer or we can do a rotary grinder. I'm gonna go ahead and throw stuff into the rotary grinder. I think that's just gonna be the easiest. Give it some fuel and that's gonna kick up and that should produce our dark gym there it goes so that is going to unlock a couple different aisles for us to go plus these 3d glasses which look absolutely baller we're gonna have to get a hold of those um so what do those 3d glasses require iron white wool actually white wool that's gonna be string that and some iron so there we go um and we should be able to make those pretty easy So 3D glasses. Oh, it needs the obscure. Oh, 
obscure glasses coming from that mod. So there's our dark gem. We unlocked this and then our fossils unlocked. So let's go ahead and get these items. I'm not going to collect this because it does say it's a choice reward, which should pull up a list and let's uh, let us pick. But if we take a look at Solus, it's really going to start to explain a little bit about these things. And hopefully we can come to understand what those items are going to be. Um, so that's what we're going to have to be looking at. I really need to get automation set up for this. Um, extracting would be great. And here's the nether chest. So inside the nether chest, this doesn't just hold nor like a normal stack of items. Let's go ahead and throw cobblestone in here, for example. This will hold multiple stacks of items in its one single inventory. And I think it's 256 items per slot. So this, this chest can hold a lot. Plus it has a really cool nether portally effect going on in there. But yeah, this chest is pretty wicked. And we're going to be using probably several of these. I think these are going to be pretty decent storage systems. Even for this uh, setup over here, like for getting these guys into a storage unit, that's going to be really great. All right, so now they have that. We have our 3D glasses. Um, technically, to get the 3D glasses, which we're going to have to do anyways, we might as well do this. We'll take some glass. And that's going to get us some obscured glass. So I know what obscured glass does. This basically is glass that blocks out light, but it's completely clear. So you can use it in mob spawners and stuff like that. And actually looks kind of cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get this set up and we'll make those 3D glasses. Perfect. So it says upgradable when on head. All right. So unique crops. I think it says there's a hotkey for it for this mod. Um, let's go into options, controls. Let's see, maybe it's under... We'll go under category. Ah, glasses. It's under V. We can set that to button five. Maybe that'll work. Sometimes it doesn't like mouse buttons, so we're gonna options control. Category. And we'll change this to like comma. Okay, so it's not really changing too much. That is if it's even working. So I noticed once we make these, it automatically gives us in the quest a pair of the upgraded versions, which I actually look, the recipe does require that you upgrade this using some of the pixel debris, which uh, we did have, but here are the actual glasses. And now when we press comma, oh my gosh, guys. Um, these shades are wicked look at that guys we should play the rest of today's episode using these glasses absolutely phenomenal um i almost wonder how the i <laughs> wonder how premiere is is reacting to this uh this being rendered um because i'm sure it's distorted as all get out it's absolutely hilarious so yeah that's these wonderful glasses uh, we just threw our shades on. At least the sky is nice and black. We're not going to hurt our eyes. Wow. That is something else. That is ap that is hilarious. We're going to leave those on. Look at look at them. Man, we look sick with those glasses on. All right. So back to business. <laughs> back to business as usual. Um, so we have that left to complete. Um, this one right, right here says we will use uh, this summoner to construct control the essence of these creatures so it says right here so any of these items are usable so these must be like the upgrades for this spawner correct a machine created from the remains of alien creatures and metal which summon a creature from a soul book um, with okay with this Life may soon return to the world. Okay. Hmm. It's a sorrow that's ender, earthy, blazing, madness, spooky. All right. So yeah, we're definitely gonna have to read up in this book. It talks a little bit about how this these things work, and how our fossils work. Formula for rate of soul transfer. Oh my gosh. That's a formula right there. 
Next, I'll show you how to create a soul book. So we're gonna need to take these ender chunks, use a sledgehammer, right? And that sledgehammer is how we are going to open these, I guess. So that's gonna be a couple sticks. That's not difficult. Couple of iron. A sledgehammer. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy crafted. And apparently we add that. Maybe not. This show's breaking with a pick. Oh, okay. Maybe we're gonna use a sledgehammer later on. Ah, there we go. So that gave us a little bit of that. Yeah, it'll give us a little bit of that. And a little bit of this. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. A whole lot of a bunch of stuff. Probably or excavate this. There we go. Alright, so. Now we have this stuff. Now's when we can use our hammer on it. So, like that. And that will get us some of the dust. And that should have unlocked it in our book. Why we have two books? I think it automatically gives us one when we craft a recipe from it. Alright, so that's going to take us even further into this mod. Alright. Um, so, we still have a lot to, lot to unlock. Um, looks like we just unlocked a bunch of stuff here. There we go, the soul book. So we need a book with ender dust in it, and it's going to make a soul book. An empty soul book is useless as an empty book. Alright, so we, we throw in these essence into the book, and that fills the book up with the souls. Interesting. So I see it right here. So here's the spawner. So we're going to need to make ender still, which is going to be the, the ender dust that we just made inside this bad boy. Oh, it's going to require these gears. See? Oh, wait, no, no, I guess not. Actually, we're going to we're gonna take this back a notch. Okay, so... This is made in a very specific machine. Ender steel shards, a chunk of metal made from the remains of alien creatures and iron. Hmm. Okay, so a kiln or smelting the ender iron. How do we get ender iron? Okay, so iron dust and the ender dust is going to get us that. Okay. Alright, so, as you can see, that is how we're going to have to do this. Looks like iron dust. Good old-fashioned iron. We're going to have to crush that down. So, I'm going to crush down some iron. Really, it's probably better if we made it, made this thing. But as you can see, that's going to require a lot of dust here. We got a lot of work ahead of us, guys. Um, but for right now, that's going to be fine, because we only need... We only need six of these to make one of the spawners. Alright, so I'm going to get to work with that, and we're going to start our spawner round. So I did my research on the reward that this thing gives off, and I think what I want by default, or the first thing I want, because we're going to have multiple choices of these as we go to complete, you know, further quests. And so it really kind of doesn't matter at this point, but what this does is this gear is going to increase the speed of the spawner. The blood crystal, I believe, increases the um, amount of mobs that can spawn uh, per cycle. And then the murky orb is going to be the range upgrade. So I'm going to go with speed for right now. And that's the one that I chose. But of course, this is going to give us another chance to get more rewards. So, let's go ahead and make this summoner. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and take this, and we're going to chop that down and get a piece of ender dust. And we're going to take that over here. And make sure you don't, don't hammer all these completely down, because these are actually used. I'm going to show you how they're used here in a second. And believe me, you're going to regret it if you do that. Um, so, we're going to take this. Let's go ahead and make our bars like that. It, ignore the diamond. It's literally nothing. I don't know why they keep spawning in there. Um, but there we go. Then we ne now have an empty summoner, which is what's required for us to complete this. And we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a dark tank, which is actually kind of nice. And a choice. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go with the range. Because I think by default, it's only three blocks away, which is pretty short. 
Um, and now we need to work on getting the soul book of spider. So lastly, we need to imbue a soul book with an essence of a creature and insert it into your summoner in order to use it. So do we have to, it does it have to be a spider specifically. Now that is what I'm wondering. Um, cause this one does say of spider. I don't know. Let's just go ahead and make the soul book. Um, so the soul book is a book, right? Let's go ahead and see soul, soul book. Um, so these are very specific books Ah, and you can see, you can just, it shows adding the essence to it and that will make it what it is, but it isn't a piece of ender dust, which is the same thing we just did. There we go on a book. And we will get a soul book. Now we're still missing it, right? Cause we have the soul book, but we need to turn this in to what this says, which is a soul book of spider. Cause it looks like we're going to need spider eyes and things like that. So awesome, right? We need to get ourselves that particular essence. So spider essence. Well, we have some essence on us. Let's go ahead and dump some materials out. Like we don't need all of these materials on us. We really just have a lot of junk on us that we don't need because we need to save some space. And let's just go ahead and use this to open up our crystals or our, our uh, bone chunks. I am going to save a couple of these bone chunks because I don't know what they're used for later on. But anyways, um, if you shift right click with them, they are going to generate chunks. And this is how you generate your essence, is this way. So you can see we got cow, sheep, chicken, pig, bat, skeleton, spider. Oh, there's our spider. So yeah, these just come from the normal bone chunks. And these other ones are going to produce our other essence for us. But there we go. That's our spider that we needed. So we can take this and apparently surround that there. And that's going to give us a soul book of the spider, which is what we needed. So now we're going to get some um, extra, what is that? Um, external essence. I don't know what that's used for. Maybe that's like a universal essence. And then this one, I'm going to go ahead and grab the murky orb. Or did I already grab the murky orb? I already did. So we'll use this to increase the amount and get the blood shards. And we'll get some vector plates. That's super simple, right? All right. So next is going to want us to get spider eyes, which means we're going to have to activate this thing. So... Let's grab our spawner. Let's go ahead and grab our book, which we just have. I have a couple more essence that we can add to the book. Um, let's grab our upgrades for the spawner. Here's our book. Here's some more spider essence and some vector plates, which you can use to kind of move them around. You know, as of right now, not that big of a deal. All right. What is this stuff used for? I wonder. Let's make some kind of a magical powder made by combining multiple different kinds of essence. There seems to be strength in the variety, causing souls to be more quickly congealed into a living form. Interesting. So this right here is how we add. And you can just do one, I think. Yeah. And that will work. So we have seven essence inside this book out of 32. By the way, I built a platform. Let's go ahead and take a ride up here. And this is actually how we're going to be getting up here. And I have trap doors up here. And so when we make it to the top platform, this is where we're going to have a spawner, which is going to go right here. Now, I don't know if this thing is directly affected by light or not, but we're going to find out. So let's go ahead and throw the book in there, which turns it into spider. And you can see it says 0% summon, 22% souls remaining. Sneak to show more, right? Let's go ahead and hit it with our crystals. We'll hit it with one of those, one of those, and one of those. And as long as we're within range, you can see it says 1%, 2%. It's starting to go a little bit faster, which is awesome. Now, can you sneak, sneak right click to pull your book out? Okay. I don't know if that affects. Oh, it does. Okay. I see it says one. Okay. Oh, it also pulls out our upgrades. So we can throw all the upgrades in. And now you can see we have two of 16 for three of those. 
And you can see the summoning or summoned is actually increasing right now. And I think we can go away a distance before it shuts off. As we have those upgrades. So I can be a little bit away before this thing turns off, but I don't think I can go super far away. You can see it shut off just now. So right here is about the range with those two upgrades. Um, I don't want that thing to spawn just yet because I don't really have any way to kill this guy. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a sword. Now this is a blood extractor, which is something that it recommends us, you know, using. Holding your inventory while slaying mobs. We probably want to go ahead and make this. Um, so we're going to need some kind of glass and spikes. Spikes require dark gems. Luckily, we should have just enough dark gems to do all this. So before we start killing and slaying some spiders, let's go ahead and make some spikes. There we are. Blood extractor, spikes. 16 of those. And we're going to need a piece of glass. Very, very simple, but it's going to be very useful as we progress through here. Also, I need to make... Uh, yeah, I need to go ahead and make... Where's my saw at? I need to go ahead and make a diamond sword because we're going to need something to kill these spiders with. Yeah, and plus... With us wearing what we're wearing, these things will help. By the way, we're going to talk about here in a second what these glasses are really used for. What am I doing? I am not making a pickaxe. We're making a diamond sword. Awesome. So let's head back up here. We're going to go ahead and let these guys spawn. Actually, I think maybe being down here, as long as we're within range, I think even being down here will work. So while we're down here, let's go ahead and get... Invisibilia seeds made. So here's Invisibilia seeds. You see right here we have glass. We have some golden rods, which is the only other thing that uses golden rods. And also one dark gem is going to be required. So we're kind of progressing through here. That is the next step through our progression line and is going to be required. Um, so what was it? We needed the rods. Four of those, some glass, which is four glass, and a dark gem. Okay, all of that ready to go. Go ahead and throw that. And one of those, and voila, we get a seed. Now, this seed is very special. When you place it, you can't see it. But with our special handy dandy glasses, we should be able to see it here. So I don't know if it grows like a normal seed, but these glasses are supposed to help you be able to see it. Apparently. I do know that I placed it in the center block there. Um, let me check and make sure we don't need some bone mill or something like that to grow it. And also make sure I don't need my 3D glasses, because I we might need to wear 3D glasses for this to work. Ah, 3D glasses is what we need to wear. So, you see right here, without the 3D glasses on, we can't see it. With the 3D glasses, we can see it. Um, and we have to break this, it looks like, to harvest it. So yeah, and it does seem to work with uh, the crop dusting. So yeah, that's something we need to do. Alright, I hope I, our spiders are spawning. That is something, this is something I really wanted to show you, that the glasses allow this to work, which is just hilarious. But yeah, we're going to be needing a bit of those seeds later on. Let's go ahead and see how our spiders are doing. They should be potentially ready to spawn, or maybe they're just 44% summoned. All right, so I'll be right back whenever these guys are about ready to, uh, to spawn. So here we are, these guys are at 99 and you can see we just got ourselves a spider. Now, it does seem to have a potion effect on it. I don't actually know what that was from. But yeah, we, it only summoned one this time, but it does have a chance to summon more than one because we do have the, uh, the orb, the blood crystal that applies a quantity modifier to this. So 
There is a chance that we can spawn more, but you notice our, it says, still says 22% souls remaining. So this could potentially last a little while. Um, it's just going to take a little bit to allow these mobs to spawn. Now, we could vector plate them like it shows and maybe have them go into a very specific place. Um, vector plates are super useful for that. And what we could do is just kind of AFK in an area, let them all build up and yeah, just kind of go at them once they're, uh, they're fully grown and we can, we can force them into an area with these vector plates. Spiders, not so much since they're a too wide mob. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and farm some of these. All we really need, of course, we have this guy that we completed, which got us, um, it looks like condensed blood and another choice reward, which I think I'm going to go with the speed. So the oscillating gear. And then, yeah, now we're just waiting for this. So if I slap that oscillating gear on here, it looks like that might have reset. Oh, it does reset, but you can see it's going way faster. Yeah, it's definitely going a lot faster. So after I've gotten quite a few of these grown, I think we're just about ready to go ahead and make the Mary Jane seed, which you can see is actually right next. Now this seed is pretty funny in how it works. Also, oh wow, that gives us speed too for quite a while. That's some, I like that. That is, yeah, that's pretty nice. All right, anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and make this seed. So it is going to require us to take this blaze invisible or invisibilia twine. And uh, we're also going to need um, a other seed, right? Oh no, a dark gem. Okay, so we'll just throw all of this in here and a dark gem and that will get us this seed. Now, the seed is pretty interesting on uh, how it works. Um, so we have to grow it with blaze powder, right? This seed grows with blaze powder, but also what it does is if we take a, a wooden bucket, which I think I have one laying around here somewhere. If not, I can go ahead and make a bucket. Right, just a good old fashioned wooden bucket. I think it was made with sticks. Yeah, with sticks. What we can do is we can plant this guy near lava, or it can be anywhere, as long as it's in this dimension, and we can grow it with blaze powder. And once it hits full growth like that, we have to be on fire in order to harvest it. Now, luckily for us, an easy way for us to do that, to set ourselves on fire, is to just take a bucket and fill this bad boy with lava and it will set us on fire. Um, but as you can see, we were able to harvest this. And that got us a cinder leaf and two more of these seeds. Now, if you leave these too long without harvesting them, they will just burn, right? They'll just burn forever. So yeah, you have to have blaze in order to farm these guys. And I believe these are used to make lava lilies, which are going to be used later on to make some obsidian skulls, which are going to be super helpful later on down the road because obsidian skulls give you fire resistance. Yeah, that is super useful. Um, so guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We did quite a bit. I still have to farm some more of this and you can, you can honestly exchange those with any of the new uh, mobs that you got. Literally all you have to do is take some of this ender crystal here and just combine it with your book. And you've seen how far uh, just a small amount of essence can go. Um, we're still at 22% and I have been farming it for quite a while now. Um, and we do have all of our upgrades and things like that. So pretty awesome, guys. We're slowly but surely going to be pushing through this. Keep in mind that it does take time for me to play these. So I know a lot of people are probably already way past me because they've spent four hours every day playing the pack and have completely blown me away. I do have other projects going on, so I'm just, you know, working through it at my own pace. But anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys sticking around and all the likes and comments on the videos, guys. It's been absolutely amazing. You guys have been really enjoying this pack. I really appreciate you guys sticking around. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, I highly recommend doing so. Also, I should honestly promote this at the beginning of the video, which I probably will. Um, I do have a Twitch stream, so if you want to catch me on the Twitch live stream, I do stream over there, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect. You can find that link down in the description below. 
Also, we do have a Discord if you want to join that. There's also it linked down in the description below. We are over 5,000 strong at this point on the Discord. We are building slowly but surely a massive army over there. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.